Hello beautiful. Happy Friday. Welcome to our last and final session of Hello Beautiful. See yourself through the Father's eyes. I pray that the last four weeks have been a blessing to you, that you have drawn near to the Father and are starting to see how very precious you are in His sight. So before we start this study, I have a question for you. How are you doing? Can you see yourself through the Father's eyes? In my book, I share of a beautiful summer day when I was sitting on a riverbank. And as I peered into the center of the river, I began to notice the, the life-giving water that, that flowed over the rocks and the sand underneath. If I peered really close, I could see how clean the rocks were and, and how, um, how white the sand was. And, and I could even see my reflection in the center. If I listened real close, I could hear the sound of the rushing water as it went over a waterfall in the distance. It was a beautiful day. But if I changed my focus just slightly, I began to pay attention to the murky water on the, on the outside of the river. Actually, right where I sat on the riverbank, there was mud and bugs and, and the water was murky and stagnant. And the Lord showed me something in that moment that was quite marvelous. How easy it is for me to change my focus to change my perspective and instead of seeing uh, God's life in my own, I begin to see the death on the outside. So I believe that God serves to change our perspective, that he wants us instead to focus on him, to focus on the life-giving water that he gives. Now when we seek God and we sit in the truth of who he is and who he says we are, our perspective begins to change. Not only can we see our reflection in his eyes, not only can we see our purpose, the purpose that we have been sent, but we begin to, to tune into his channel. We begin to see things from his perspective. His desires become our desires. The things that he wants for our life becomes the same that we want for our own. We begin to see people and love people through his eyes and serve as his hands and feet. The peace that transcends all understanding becomes real even in the face of challenge. Now, beautiful, I do have to share with you one caveat to this. It's easy for me to write these words, but the truth is I've spent 48 years on this journey realizing the, um, the truth of who God is. And I've realized that while his gift of life is free, his gift of love is free, his gift of peace is free. For me to experience it, I have to intentionally receive it. That abundant life that Jesus came to give, the truth of who he says that I am, and the purpose uniquely designed just for me, all of these things can be received as I tune in to his channel. Now what I like to do every morning is speak a simple prayer and Perhaps this will be helpful to you. It goes like this. Yes, Jesus, I will give you my yes and I will follow you. I lay my burdens and my false beliefs at your feet and I receive your free gift of life to the full. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me into your way everlasting. Perhaps you might like to make this your daily prayer and allow the Spirit to fill you up. Just as His mercies are new every day, allow God's Spirit to renew you every day. As we wrap up our study, I would like to share with you three practical ways that I use to tune into God's channel and receive His gift of peace while, while stepping into my purpose. 
The first way is through serving. 1 Peter 4, 8 through 10 shares, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms, Paul actually gave us some very clear um, definitions of a varied number of gifts that the Holy Spirit gives in 1 Corinthians 12. You might take a look at those and, and perhaps you can identify with one or even several of them. 1 Corinthians 13 conti continues as Paul shares us the instruction manual for using these gifts. Consider these two chapters as two bookends that come together. Uh, one that shares with us the tools that God gives us to serve Him, and the other that shares with us the instruction manual on how to use those tools. Now, if I can be transparent with you, when I first read these scriptures, I was quite confused. I didn't know what my spiritual giftings were, and, and I certainly didn't know how to love the way God called me to. But the honest truth is, what I learned is that when I give Jesus my yes and, and I give him my hand, the Holy Spirit takes that hand and he takes me on a journey to reveal to me what my giftings are and how to use them. And perhaps you're curious, perhaps you have no idea what your spiritual gifts are. I would like to challenge you to pray, to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal these to you. And perhaps you might like to take the test at spiritualgiftstest.com. I would love to hear what the Spirit reveals to you. And, and if you have any questions, um, maybe we can uh, walk together in this journey to help you. The second way that I like to tune into the Father's channel is to find my balance. Even as a daughter of the King, it's, it's easy for me to want to check off the box. Did I read my scripture? Check. Did I pray? Check. But when I make it about checking boxes, I miss out on the opportunity of the truth of the relationship that He has called me into. He wants me to rest in Him. And he doesn't expect me to come to him perfect. No, instead he meets me right where I am. He doesn't want me to strive in everything I do, but instead he wants to help me. And he doesn't want to just be an appointment in my schedule, but instead he desires for me to draw near to him. This is all possible when I look to him first, when I make him my first priority. He becomes my first for identity, for relationships, for purpose, challenges, blessings, and yes, even in my serving opportunities. And here's the thing, when I rest in him and when I make him my first, I find that he is then freed up to bless everything that comes after. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't bless me even if I don't give him my yes because he's done that on many occasions. But what I find is that it's, it's almost like that river. You know, the, if the dams that I put in place to stop the flow of water and, and make it stagnant, when I knock those dams down and I, and I give my life to him, that, that water flows. Those blessings flow. And I begin to receive the blessings and receive that life to the full that Jesus came to give. Now, there are some practical ways that, that I use to rest in the arms of my Father. Um, the first being daily prayer. I think we spoke about this in week one. You know, God desires to have a daily conversation with us. Communication that goes back and forth. Um, not only does he want to hear our requests, but he also wants us to sit in, in, the, in his presence and listen for his voice. Um, the study of God's word. I can't even begin to express how important it is. You, you really truly begin to know 
um, the heart of your father when you dive into his word and you hear his voice through the pages of his love story. Stopping to smell the flowers. This is so important. Um, that and enjoying the little things in life. We, we have to be still. We have to be intentional about stopping to do these things and just breathing in the beauty of his creation. Finding beauty in the weight. Yes, I know, beautiful, it is hard. But, but when you just stop and allow the Lord to work in your season of weight, you find that that journey in itself is quite beautiful. Nurturing my relationships. God has placed people in my life for a specific purpose. Some of them are uh, seasonal. Some of them are long-term. But each one, um, each one de deserves my priority to nurture and to, to share the Father's love. Um, when I do that, then I have the opportunity to receive his, his love in full force. Learning not to avoid conflict. This is a hard one for me. I don't like conflict. But, but the honest truth is, 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 you know, just as James tells us in James 1, you know, God uses our trials to, to um, mature us and make us complete. So don't be afraid of the conflict. Instead, allow the Spirit to work with you through the conflict. A daily reflection on the fruits of the Spirit. Um, the Lord gives us um, so many things. And in Galatians, um, we learn the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These are all gifts that the Spirit gives us in abundance. All we have to do is ask. Focusing on our priorities, God being first, and yes, learning to rest in Him. These are all practical ways that I learn to tune into the Father's channel. Finally, believe the truth that you too can change the world. Jesus is changing this world day by day. While we may not see it, it is happening. And he uses people just like me, just like you, to change this world. But we have to believe it and receive it to know that, that he will change the world through us. In fact, in Ephesians 2.10, he promises this to us. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. He will change the world through us. Remember last week as we shared the visual of the rain coming down, falling to earth, providing uh, water for the seed and bread for the eater, and not returning to heaven without performing the purpose for which it was sent, we can believe and live in the promise that we too will leave our mark on this world, that Jesus will leave his mark on this world through us. He will change the world through us. It only takes a willing and a humble heart for him to transform us and to transform the world around us one day at a time. So beautiful, what will you do with the offer of God? Will you intentionally be still and seek his presence? Will you intentionally seek truth from the one who knit you in your mother's womb? Will you intentionally seek your purpose as you follow him, choosing to listen, learn, and go? And will you intentionally receive his promise through serving, finding your balance in believing the truth that you too can change the world? He's already done the hard part. <laughs> the yes, the yes is up to us. And if there's one thing I know to be true, when we turn to Jesus and give him our yes, just like the reflection in the water on that beautiful summer's day, we will begin to see ourselves through the Father's eyes and the Holy Spirit can go to work. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this study. We thank you, God, for revealing to us the truth of how much you love us, the relationship that you desire to have with us. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to see ourselves through your eyes. 
helping us to see that we have a purpose, Lord, and that you want to, to tune us into your channel. Help us to see life to the full from your perspective. I pray, God, for every single woman um, in, in my earshot. I pray, God, that she will know just how precious she is to you and that every single day will be a day of renewal as your spirit fills her up. Lord, draw us near and allow us to see things through your eyes. Allow us to love people with your heart as we serve as your hands and feet. Lord, we see the life to the full that Jesus came to give and we receive it fully. And we thank you, God, for your spirit who will lead us into your way everlasting. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my heart with you these four weeks. I pray that you will continue to be blessed as you seek the words of your Father. And if you would like to continue to connect with me, I'm of course here on Beautiful Bible Studies, but I have a blog at adaughtersjourney.net. And if you're interested in the book, Hello Beautiful, you can purchase it on Amazon. There is a link on my page at youthroughthefathereyes.com. I would love to share a, a, a scripture printable with you. I will be sending that to everyone who has signed up for the study. And I will also be um, performing a drawing in the next week uh, for two free copies of the book. Thank you so much for the time you've allowed uh, me to share with you. And I pray God's many blessings over your, the, your life and the life of your family. Thank you, and I hope you have a blessed day.